Hello friends, this is Michael Canadas with the Grovian Doll Museum and the Carmel Doll Shop. In the year 1997, along with David Robinson, we produced a special exhibit for the United Federation of Doll Clubs called Her Trousseau. At long last, we're sharing the fruits of our labor. I do hope you enjoy this special exhibit. Worth and I rule Paris, Empress Eugenie. It was every woman's fantasy in the 19th century to be dressed at this location. It was also Charles Frederick Worth's fantasy to dress every woman. Here is the great man himself, a true artist. The House of Worth was one of the first establishments to label their garments. The House of Worth was a family affair. Here we see Marie Worth, Jean-Philippe Worth, and Gaston Worth. Jean-Philippe Worth would be the successor to his father. His father said of his son, the student has exceeded the master. In our exhibit, the first gown we will look at was co-produced, co-designed, by Jean-Philippe Worth and his father, Charles Frederick. Perched in the center of our special exhibit is a brew mannequin wearing a Charles Frederick, Jean-Philippe Worth ensemble. The brew mannequin is wearing the reception bodice, but there was also a second bodice, a dinner bodice or a ball gown bodice. The House of Worth was noted for their stunning fabrics, and this is no exception. The motif is floral and wheat shafts. Notice the construction. No expense was spared in pattern placement. Note, the House of Worth side panels are almost always cut on the bias. The front panel of the gown is one piece of fabric. The ends are not finished. They're simply left with the salvage edge. Visualize a giant piece of gorgeous ribbon. Under the lace decoration, the silk color is actually a robin's egg blue. Moving on in the exhibit, circa 1879, this worth bodice features beautiful silver watered silk. Note the profusion of spangles and silver lace. This had to be worn by a debutante because the size is tiny. Look at that waist. Hard to tell from a photograph, but this is a front opening bodice. Again, this is a piece by the father and son, Charles Frederick Worth and Jean-Philippe Worth. Here we have another father-son creation. This bodice is circa 1880. The House of Worth regularly use machine-made lace in their creations. Note the bow decoration. The House of Worth was second to none when it came to bows. Here we can really see the beautiful piecework that was utilized in their creations. Note the beautiful fit of this bodice. This Lyon silk has a reoccurring theme from the House of Worth. Roses, ostrich feathers, and peacock feathers. Here again, marvel at this piecework. Superb. Circa 1895, this stunning Worth ensemble 
utilizes a Lyon silk that has not been recorded in recent years. This was the first time that this has ever been shown in public. Note the floral swags. Again, we have the rose motif. The repeat is achieved by each of the separate panels placed together. If you noted in the center black, there are beautiful cascading bows. Although black is difficult to see, they are there. This fabric is simply out of this world. Shall we move on to see our next gem? At first glance, this circa 1888 bodice appears to be a doll piece, but it is not. It's actually a sample made exactly like a lady's costume of the period. The designer is unknown, but it looks slightly like Worth or Doucet, one of the great masters. And speaking of Worth, here we have an 1898 ball gown bodice created out of silk velvet. Although it appears to be black, it's midnight blue, decorated with ecru lace and beautiful paste stones. This confection from 1910 appears to be a normal size, when in reality, it's very, very tiny. This was definitely made for a debutante. This French gem is a miracle that it has survived. China silk, chiffon, lace, beadwork. It has everything on it except the kitchen sink. Moving on in the exhibit, it's time to have a look at some of the masterworks by Jacques Doucet. Monsieur Doucet is a contemporary of Jean-Philippe Worth, but it would be Jacques Doucet that would bring worldwide fame to Maison Doucet. Maison Doucet was one of the oldest establishments in Paris. One of the earliest records found was from the year 1817. Their speciality was lace and veils. The living quarters of the Doucet family was over the shop. Later on in life, Jacques Doucet would say, I grew up amongst pigs. Of course, he said it with a twinkle in his eye and a smile on his face. Jacques Doucet had a disdain for commercialism. However, he took his global success and turned it into one of the finest collections of 18th century artifacts. Here we can see a colorized version of a corner in his collection. Doucet's collection was great inspiration to his couture line. We can see it throughout all of the 1870s and 80s and into the dawn of the 20th century. Today, Jacques Doucet is known as a great collector rather than a great designer. He was one of the first to embrace the Art Deco era modern out with the old and in with the new, Jacques Doucet totally embraced the new movement to modernity. It's a long ways from Louis XVI to the Art Deco style, but Jacques Doucet totally embraced this new movement. Monsieur Doucet was a godsend to starving artists such as Picasso and Rousseau. Monsieur Doucet was the original owner to many masterpieces, such as Rousseau's The Snake Charmer. Here we can see it in its original setting. Let's have a look at some of Doucet's frocks. This piece from 1875 clearly has the influence of his first great collection, 18th century art, with its Watteau back. Sadly, the skirt was long lost, but here we can see just the beautiful detail of a Doucet piece. Like the House of Worth, the House of Doucet 
labeled their garments. Maison Doucet created complete wardrobes for their clients, from phenomenal ball gowns to everyday pieces, such as this 1890s bodice, comprising of patterned silk, Chantilly lace, and lilac slipper satin. Moving on in the exhibit, we're going to go to the year 1900 with Jacques Doucet. In 1900, the place to be seen was at the Paris Opera. Here we have a Doucet cloak made of iridescent lilac silk. It appears to have a lace overlay, but in fact, it's woven into the silk, a phenomenal piece. Note to the right, the antique lace utilized in this piece. In the exhibit, there was another opera cloak from 1890s with a velvet Medici collar created from wool and then lined in the most stunning Lyon silk. It's time to move on to one of my favorites, Emile Penga. Emile was a contemporary of Charles Frederick Wirth, although today he's almost forgotten. In his time, his pieces were some of the most prized as they are today. Like Worth and Doucet, his pieces also come with his label. His maison was en rue Louis Le Grand, part of old Paris that today no longer exists. In their location, they created some of the most beautiful garments that have ever been made, such as this 1895 dolman, created out of silk velvet and brocade applique, trimmed with chicken feathers in an oriental motif. What you don't see is the pale pink lining, completely hand quilted with some of the most beautiful stitch work I've ever seen. I believe his Maison was one of the first to understand seasonal collections. Emile obviously studied crafts from all over the world. Here we have another dolman. This piece, only the shoulders are fabric. The rest of this is beadwork macrame. It weighs many, many pounds. Some of the most fantastic work that you'll ever see. Many of his garments that are found today are in a state of perfect preservation. That's because they were so prized by their original owners. They appreciated his genius, his workmanship, and his play with color, as seen in this piece. Moving on, now we're looking at a piece by Maison Ball, one of the most beautiful ball gowns of the pigeon-breasted era that you'll ever see. This beautiful ball gown has a floral basket motif, roses, quilted, padded, ruching, paste stones, you name it, it's got it. This piece is a triumph of feminine beauty. All of that in a perfect state of preservation. One of the most popular features in the exhibit were the cases that housed the hats and accessories. Here we have a hair ornament from circa 1860. Created out of buckram, lace, silk, and pearl fringe. Another hair ornament. This is something that Empress Eugenie might have worn. A triumph of ruching and bow art. Fans have been around since hot weather. In the exhibit, we had fans from the 18th century, 19th century, and the 20th century. We don't have to imagine what a Regency fan looked like. Here one is. 
above it is a fan from 1850. Both of these pieces are French. The ladies that shopped at Maison Worth also shopped at de Villeroy, one of the most famous fan makers of the 19th century. Here you can see one of his pieces that is done in the 18th century taste. And speaking of de Villeroy, they were known for creating very unusual, fanciful, fun fans, such as this little spaniel puppy. They made kittens, monkeys, pugs, you name it. These are always enchanting. One of my favorites in the exhibit was this directoire fan, The Birth and the Triumph of Love. This fan depicts the life story of Cupid. He was born in a cloud. Each one of the cartouches tells his life story. Note that the fan is all hand painted and the spangles are all metal. And it's quite an impressive size. And of course, if you went to a ball in the 19th century, you'd have to have a posy holder. This was basically a bouquet holder. In the exhibit, we had bouquet holders, posy holders, skirt lifters, all kinds of unusual accessories. We hope you've enjoyed this tour of Her Trousseau special exhibit. Follow us on Facebook, like and subscribe on YouTube, and remember to push that notification button.